here is BC Crew, going Hello. against Public Enemy. How you doing? I'm a Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, introduce you to Gordon. And, and you know what? Introduce yourself to the world. We need to hear I don't know who I am. I'm having an identity crisis. Who will be competing? Ah. But they're not in this round. But I am a Gordon Pepper. Next to me, I'm honored to have the illustrious former New East Cruiserweight Champion, Mr. P1, Mr. Shandai Faison. Hey, what's going on? It's good to be with you all for the second time today. And we have uh, a crew of born champions, and we have a bunch of um, public enemies on the lane. BC Crew coming from Long Island. They came in first place in their district. Public Enemy did not come in first place in New England South, but they won their first round matchup, and therefore they get BC Crew. And let's chat here about your lineups. BC Crew scratch. In first position, Jeremy Melito. Second place, Joe LaCool, or Joe Cool, as they say. And third, and your anchor, Joe Navarre. Uh. On Public Enemy side, Crystal Bryant is in first place, or in the first position, and she is currently bowling now in leadoff. Second place, Aaron Wilder. Third place, Mike Florentine. That is your lineup for Scratch. This is game one of this, if you just tune in. As always in the UBA, it is a 40-point system. You get two points per game, four points for series, 10 points for the overall wood between nine teams. Usually, if you get that, you win. The team that gets the 22 points first wins the match, and they get to advance to next weekend in round three. Mm -hmm. If you don't get there, you go bye-bye. Yes, and this is round two. It we is had round, round two. one earlier, yep. and round one was a lot of fun to call. Hopefully, this keeps the party going. BC Crew winning their match, and well, actually, you know, BC Crew had the bye. BC Crew had the bye, so theoretically they won their match. They didn't have to bowl anybody in the first yeah. round. Uh, Public Enemy, um, they had to go through a, a, a tribe, uh, a turmoil of tribe, but they um, over they overshadowed the tribe, and the tribe is no longer here, and Public Enemy is. The, the, the tribe had to leave. Yes, they did. They, they vacated. They got scalped. They got scalped. Now, the first match that we did, the pace was slow, methodical. You're not going to see that here. No, you're not. This is going to be fast. It's going to be fast paced. BC Crew, very fast paced. Public Enemy likes to speed it up, likes to have the tempo going. And, and they like to put, both teams like to put pressure on their opponents with strikes and force you to carry. Yes, they do. This is going to be very much a carry contest. This is going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of striking. And I, one of the things that I like to see on BC Crew is you have communicators on every single line. You got Dwight Flowers over here. You've got Damon White running around. You have Tynell Tate, by the way, who's in the middle. We'll chat with him later. Mm -hmm. So we have all sorts of people going on. Florentine right now missing the head pin. Joe Navarre, his shot. Gets a head pin, almost gets too much of it. BC Crew starting with a lot of strikes. Yeah, you know, and one thing, when you, when you think about BC Crew, you think about strikes, you think about um, the OGs, you think about one of the, the the people who were who were part of the part of the pillars, and we also got Navarra and Melito, who um, combined have about a total of three nine hundred series in their resume. They they strike a lot. They do. They shoot three hundreds a lot. But again, if you're public enemy, the key here is you've got to match up with them. You've you've got to keep focus. You've got to carry also, and you have to capitalize on any mistakes BC Crew has. That's right. In addition to that, if you're looking at the handicaps, and I don't see them in yet, I'm going to assume Public Enemy is going to get a bunch, and therefore, you've got to utilize that to your advantage. And Special K right there, striking like she usually does. Uh, one of the um, better of the, the Connecticut bowlers uh, here, Crystal Bryant, will definitely put pressure on you. She will sit down on you, and she will put the pressure on your chest. And let's see if Jer Jeremy Melito can handle that Chris pressure. Crystal Bryant, one of the very few female bowlers that bowl in scratch, but she is deadly, especially if she finds a line. Yes. Speaking of firing a line, here's Melito. There's a strike. Four in a row for BC Crew. BC Crew is A, B, C. Public Enemy, D, E, F. That's right. So I got to ask you this, Sean Knight. As mm -hmm. I'm seeing over here, BC Crew, four strikes in a row. One of the things that we said earlier, public enemy cannot afford to get run over early. If there is, unlike other teams, and we saw in an earlier matchup, hit, the hit squad puts lights out in a 162 pin hole. Huh. Lights out was able to grab game three, get the win. I don't see the same thing happening here. If BC Crew gets you in a 150, 200 pin hole, you're in deep, deep trouble. Well, well, the one thing about foresight is you have to be able to see things earlier to potentially predict some kind of future. What I predict here is, like you said, uh, a fight that maybe someone could get caught off guard. 
Uh, BC crew, they're known, they're established. Public Enemy, we haven't seen a lot of them, but you we're going to see a lot of them now, and we're going to see what they're made of. Public Enemy is here for a reason, and we are going to potentially see what that reason is in this second round matchup. Public Enemy, again, from the New England South, this is... I don't want to say home field advantage, mm -hmm. but a little bit. They are, at least a bunch of their members should be familiar in playing in this house. Yes. BC Crew from Long Island maybe does not have that same familiarity. So Joel Cole right now leaving the first non-strike for BC Crew. Yeah. If he makes the spare, they will still have a little bit of a lead. They'll be up by 10 and change. Lacola can make the spare, a.k.a. Joe Cole. And he will. Yeah, Joe, the cool, calm, and collected, makes his spare, converts to 4 7 with no problem. Florentine is up right now for Public Enemy. He started with a spare. Working on that, looking at the first strike that he has. Oh, whoa, out of trouble. Leaves the four. That went, that went from crap to sugar, right there. And. Let's see if Joe Curry on the back of a jersey, Joe Navarro right there. Let's see if he can do what he's known to do, and that's strike a lot and make adjustments rather quickly, if needed. If needed. But the other thing about BC Crew, as we see Joe Navarro hitting the strike, temping goes down. They chat with each other. They are one of the best teams in the UBA of chatting. And one of the things that I noted on, on the last match was that some of the teams are sort of, eh, whatever, we're not really going to chat, only when they're in trouble. They chatted. If you saw, I saw Dwight Flowers, that's yes. this guy. You chatted a lot during practice with some bowlers and some of the keys that you see because, again, I've known you forever. You're one of those people get, that can see and read the lanes easily. What are the keys for BC Crew in order for them to get to win today? Just stay focused. Keep the ball to the right and we're good. All right. He said it. Ball right, they're good. Yep, that's right. Crystal Bryant leaving an eight pin, and we've seen a lot of that. Yes, yes. The number of the day has been eight. That eight pin has definitely been um, standing up and being, dare I say, independent uh, on this Independence Day um, post weekend. Speaking of which, opt-out period's coming out right now. A lot of bowlers are going to be independent by August 18th. Well we, well, we thank everybody for opting in and watching us here with, with our UBA matchups here in the playoffs. And Jeremy Molino opting into three in a row on top of BC Crew. Indeed. They're starting to pick up a lead. And again, you, you've got to keep close to BC Crew. You cannot let them get a big lead, and you cannot let them, let them get comfortable. No, no, no. That is a huge mistake if mm -hmm. you let them get comfortable. Yes, yeah, so avoid catastrophe and hope for a good, um, well, well a, a, a good conclusion. Well, again, you got to keep it close. You got to wait for BC Crew to make a mistake. Nobody's assuming they're going to make mistakes. Maybe if they don't make mistakes, then you're in deep trouble. Exactly. You you definitely want a great climax when you're competing. It's Joel Cole right now, leaving a seven pin. Aaron Wilder, looking to see if he can get a strike on the board. BC Crew starting out six strikes out of eight bowlers. Public Enemy right now only two strikes. And a 10-pin yeah, to go along shot. with their two strikes. It was a good shot, but 10-pin. Yep. The cool looking to make the conversion. Get the stereo. If they do that, BC will still be up by 20, looking for more. And, will, and the other thing about BC, they're professional. They're methodical when they make spares. Yes, they are. It's not maybe they are, maybe they're not. It's dead eye solid. It is very rare to see anybody from BC crew making a technical error. Yeah, I don't think they want to hear nuts mouth. Nut being Dwight Flowers. No, and, and yeah, you, you'll get a very, very angry Dwight Flowers. And yeah, we will definitely see a Flowers uh, and, uh, later on coming. We will see his son, uh, the, yes. the heir of the Flowers throne. AKA the kid. That will be game two. Yes, that will be. Public Enemy not making any makeable mistakes either. That's good to keep them in until they find their striking shoes. The question becomes, will that become too late? At least on the scratch side, because here comes Navarro right now. That looks good. It is. That's buried. Dare I say Navarro looks dangerously comfortable right now. He looks very comfortable, <laughs> and so does Melito. Yes. As you said, they look dangerously comfortable, and that is if you're Public Enemy, you don't want to see that. You want to see them missing. You want to see the oh, oh my goodness. And, but, and, and if you're if you're BC, you don't want to see everyone carrying the world. But I mean, you don't have to, much to worry about when you're striking. But when they're getting carry, they have an opportunity to really stay in the fight. Well, yeah. Well, you got to stay in. That's a good way to stay in. BC up by 40 as we go into the fourth frame. 
But again, Public Enemy keep trying to stay into this with marks. Again, you, you don't want to leave a whole bunch of hideous opens. That's a nice strike by Chris O'Brien. Yes, indeed. Chris O'Brien right there, driving right through, not getting, not, not driving too much through the head, getting the pocket just right. And right now she's on spare strike, spare strike. So all close frames. Melito though on front three. Yeah, front three, possibly front four. One of the things that you were telling me is when we set up the matchups when you're just like, oh, we have to say BC crew match. And then you, and then I said, they're bubbling, bowling public enemy. You say, Chris O'Brien. I'm like, yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to do this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's very steady, very good. She's fantastic. It's a, a pleasure to watch on the lane. Pleasure to watch on the lane. She's fantastic. She's methodical. She is arguably one of the best bowlers on the South, in the uh, New England Southeast. On, the, on that aspect, meanwhile, Jeremy <laughs> just one of the best bowlers, period, four yeah. in a row. And, whoa, well, gets the 10 out. Unfortunately, well, he got not the 10 the out. He didn't get the 7 out. And right, right now, BC Crew is doing what BC Crew does, which is the lots of strikes. There's Joe LaCool up here right now, getting up on lane 14. Getting up the lanes the way he wants to, but the ball definitely um, reacting a little too strong. He might be standing a little too far left. He uh, could. Might he, have to make an adjustment. Yeah, and he's actually chatting right now with Jeremy. And again, this is what good teams do. Chat, yeah. chat, 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 chat. This, this is what you need to do. Yeah, they are not alone on the lanes with one another. It's not just your frame, your frame, your frame. It's all of our frames. It's not that you have 10 frames and I have 10 frames. Collectively, we have 30 frames. So if you all think like that on a united front, it'll be united adjustments and hopefully united victory. Yeah, again, BC crew comfortably ahead by around 36, possibly 46, depending on the spare. He makes that. Yeah, great conversion right there of uh, the uh, 247. Let's see what's going on right here. And ooh, well, we got the we got 3610. 3610. Which bound, counters out the 247 that he yeah. saw earlier. Literally a mirror image. So now what Navarro wants to see a mirror image of is what he did the first three frames. Indeed. He wants to match his um, his lead off bowler, which is Melito. Navarro on the right side oh, looks, showing that. Oh, that oh, looks high. Wait a minute. I matching three four seven. To, yeah, matching three six ten. That looks good. And then it. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Yeah, three six ten matching. However, he doesn't want to do what Florentine just did, which yeah. is open. And, and what and what could have potentially happened there? You see that um, the person that's leading with three strikes um, does not strike. Goes high, leads seven count. You might rush your spare a little bit and then make a um, non forced error. It's all about conversions. A lot of great conversions being made. Let's see if this conversion over here can be made by Joe Curry, as you see. If you have the name Curry in the back of New Jersey, you know for making big shots. If your name's Navarro. Oh, he almost did the exact same thing. That ball peeled over, clipped off the three. If the seven was up there, he would have made it. Yeah, I was saying there, a little, a little bit of shadow split shooting. But the Sparrow adds some more pins to their total. BC Crew up by almost 60 as we go into the fifth frame of game one. Chris O'Brien up. Mm -hmm. Looking to double up. And that ball looks okay. Oh, five pin. Oh, uh, we, we have a situation. Now, what? she's on the scratch pair. Uh -huh. We're not worried about her missing a five pin, are we? Because if you miss a five pin, I will guarantee you BC Crude has been pretty quiet. They're gonna get significantly louder. Yeah, they will, they will. They will give it to her loud and proud. Loud and clear. Let's see what Melito has to say about that. Melito says, says that. I don't care about five. The only five that I wanna see is five strikes in a yeah, row. He That's what he says. Five times two. Five times, five times, five times, five times, five. Now, even though scratch pairs are big, your bread and butter, I always say this, is what your handicaps do as, well, as a, as a six, not a three. We, will, we shall see about that. I don't see the handicap in yet. We'll focus on them later. Yes, indeed. All right, Crystal, Crystal makes a spare. However, spares don't beat strikes. Jellicoe knows this as he's going for the second one of the game, and he gets it. And he does. Second Jellicoe. one for his game. 
right now, possibly 4-3 in favor of BC Crew this frame. And if they do that, then they'll be at almost 70 pins. Again, that's nice, but if you're BC Crew, you're not satisfied with 70. No, you're not. I mean, keep in mind, again, 160 was not good enough in game one in terms of a lead. So 70 certainly is not going to be good enough game one. Mm -hmm. The no thumb assassin is up. Yeah, you definitely want to focus on pace whenever you're competing. You don't want to get rattled by what's happening or anywhere else. You want to focus on your pair because anything you do could lay down um, a, good, a good foundation for what your whole team does. All right, so now we officially have the score sheet. Navarro. And in terms of the handicap, this is interesting. Here mm. comes Navarro, gets a strike. Yes. This is interesting, because looking at the handicap, BC is actually getting nine pins in the first handicap, which we'll get to next game. Uh -huh. And they are giving 15 on the last pair. Again, we will get to those games and irrelevancy as the match goes on. Right now, Scratch is trying to not make this very relevant. Florentino, final, well, about time, he made a strike. He's also the only person that's open. BC Crew up by 68 as we go into the second half of game one. Yeah, 68 pins. Um, it's, that, that's something you don't want to see. You never want to be in any kind of deficit, but it's a deficit that's, that's um, definitely able to be made up. Let's see if it starts. That process right now with Crystal Bryant going up the lanes. And boom, going Dutch. Right now, lane 13 is being lucky for her. Uh, 14, the even number, is not giving her the even amount of strikes that she would like to see. Well, what Public Enemy needs to be very concerned about is BC Crew. Yes, Jeremy's got five in a row. What, what they also need to worry about from BC Crew is that Joe LaCool and Joe Navarro are also on strikes. Yes. So they can they can rattle for six, and if Public Enemy doesn't counter, then that 60 pin lead could be 100 pins in a hurry as Jeremy Melito passes. Very good. Pop. His brakes work. The brakes work. You got to do what you got to do. I got no problem with the balk. Let's see what happens up here on lane 13 right now. 13, Aaron Wilder is up looking to double. And again, if you're public enemy, now is a good as time as any to start cutting down on that deficit that they're currently at. Can Lee do it here? Yes, he can. Yeah, Wilder the better. First double from anybody on public enemy this mm. game. So it's about time somebody showed up for them. Yeah, somebody needs to show up. Well, Mark, Mark's keep you in the game until you can figure it out. Mm -hmm. So at least for the most part, yeah, they're down 60. That is makeable. However, it's not going to be makeable if Jared Merlino keeps striking. That's six in a row for him. And again, Joe LaCool and Joe Navarro, if they both double here, that is six for them versus the best the public enemy can do is five. So they'll build their leader around 70. Yeah, not, not like a good old cool six pack. Six pack. Six pack attack. Cool, calm, collected, and carrying a strike is Joe LaCool. La the BC, BC crew up 68 could be again in the mid 70s with another strike from the bar, regardless of what they do. Meanwhile, uh, out of trouble, but that is not a strike. Yeah, that ball was taking a little trip. Let's take a little Joe Scott. Joe Scott took a long walk. <laughs> A long walk off of almost a very short pier. Yeah, for real. And he looks back and he smiles, but also has a sigh of relief as it did not go into the channel. Well, the good news is that it didn't go in the channel. The bad news is it could have, and it could have left a nine, and the exact same result is going to happen, which is they lose a mark if the, no Navarro will double here in the sixth frame. Does he make the adjustment on that last shot that he did? Yes, he does. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not often that you'll see Navarro not make any kind of adjustment that he needs to. One of the no. best at doing that. Yeah, it could be a micro board and he'll make it. It could be. 90 pin lead for BC Crew threatening to really blow this open as we go into the seventh frame. Six in a row as a team for BC Crew. Six in a row for Jeremy Melito as he and the team are looking for seven in a row. So if there's any time that public enemy needs to carry, it is now. I predict a double coming here right now on lane 14. It's definitely going to be a double. I feel it in my spirit. There it is. Your spirit is correct. 
Can't fight the feeling. Credit to Sean Dyke face on spirit. <laughs> it's all about spirit. I've got spirit. How about you? <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob. Right now, not a lot of cheerleading needs to happen for BC Crew. Molito potentially on front seven here. Let's see what happens. It looks good going up. And it is seven, but it's a seven pin. You're the only per you're the person that did play-by-play. -play, and you're that's the only frame that you'd be play by play on, but you did that. Maybe you're the dark cloud, not me. Oh, dark and it's all your just fault. A, uh, you gotta just call me a cloud. I don't want you getting canceled. You're a cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I am always called, by the way, inside joke here, I'm always called the Dark Cloud. Yes, yes. That is my nickname. I haven't called that the 300 killer. So I blame Sean Dyke for this one. I, I'll take it. I'll be, I'll be that guy. You can put the blame on you me with my voice. However, wow. looking for three in a row here from Aaron Wilder. If he gets it, there it is. Ooh. Public Enemy starting to make a run on the scratch side. It may be too little, too late, but you never know. Let's see what happens when you put some pressure on. Yeah, Aaron right there with the with the strike, three in a row, looking good. Let's see if Melito can convert a seven pin. Uh, more than likely should, but anything can happen. Let's see what happens here. He got it. Clockwork. Now Joe Lacool on a double, looking for three in a row. All right, let's go, Tom. Florentino, meanwhile, looking to strike over here. He does. So we got a five count from Public Enemy in terms of marks. BC Crew can match that, and if they do, they will still hold an 87-pin lead going into the eighth frame. Mm -hmm. uh, a little early prediction here. Uh, whoever wins is going to win by getting 26 points. It's not going to be anything past 30. I'm going to disagree with you on that. I think someone gets 30. Hmm. We'll see. Hey, any frame, anything can happen in any game. But of course, that's what we always say. And in terms of any sports, that's absolutely what it is. We've seen that happen already earlier on today when one team who thought that they had it didn't. Even mm -hmm. though I will say they didn't give the game away, the other team took it. Exactly. They, 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 grabbed, they reached up and they grabbed it, they climbed up. And let's see if this ball can climb back. And it definitely just, ooh, no pin stands. No pin stands, Joe Navarro, three. So five, five count even. BC crew up 87 going into the eighth frame. The slight advantage that Public Enemy has is that they have three strikes to a double versus two doubles and a spare for BC. But that alone will not be enough to turn the tie. Public Enemy is going to need to have some help from BC crew to, for them to get back into this game. And, you know, and you're looking at all um, six competitors on the scratch pair. You see Melito with a 240 average. Lacool, Lacool with a 233. Navarro with 258. 233 yes. is a slacker. Yeah, it's the slacker of the crew is 233 on that pair. Navarro with a 258. On the other side, you see Crystal Bryant, who right there just gets a triple right there with a 239. You have 228 in Aaron Wilder and Michael Florentino with the 240. No slouches on either of the scratch pairs. No slouches, but Florentino right now has got no carry, at least on lane 13. And you can make an argument that is the difference in this game. Meanwhile, lots of carry from everybody. And Lacole has started to find it also for BC Drew, and that spells trouble for Public Enemy. Mm -hmm. What also will spell trouble is another strike from Jeremy Molito doesn't get it, 7-pin. Yes, um, getting to the pocket now a little quick. Not losing the pocket, but losing the carry. Maybe getting a little fast. As we go uh, over the course of time, frame by frame, Combine with practice, you get a little stronger. The ball gets a little longer down the lane. You don't get the same finish you did before when you were smoother. It's all about now, do you have to so slow down your feet or do you have to get a surface change? We'll see what happens as the game goes by. And uh, that, that could have been a huge strike there for Public Enemy. Oh, yeah. Aaron Wilder doesn't have it. He gets a double that he doesn't want. Yeah. That of the 3-9 variety. Mm -mm. A little bit of a break for BC Crew. Not that BC Crew needed any breaks right mm -mm. now. Yeah, should have, could have, would have situation right there. Uh, if you could have struck, that would have been four in a row. You feel you should have struck, you didn't. So now, what what are you going to do? You're going to... You better make the spare. Up, make the spare. Make the spare and see what BC Crew does. Joe Lacool up, eighth frame. Can BC up by around 87 pins? 
And uh -oh, oh my goodness. Hmm. First unforced error for him, second unforced error for Public Enemy. Again, BC crew, no opens at all of any variety on the Scratch Squad, which is one of the reasons why they're up by 87, now threatening to be over 100. Yeah, no unforced errors, and they're definitely forcing a situation for Public Enemy. Look Cooley up. Let's see how cool he stays. He looks pretty cool on that one. And wow. it would have been cool if he carried that, but he didn't. Another eight pin. Yeah, Take a shot every time you get an eight pin. Well, it's, it takes a shot to get the eight pin because the open, all he needs to do is make the spare, and they'll be even on marks, regardless of what Florentino does. In this case, he gets a double. So four marks on the board for Public Enemy. If Navarro throws another strike, they'll be even four to four. Assuming, of course, that Joe Cool gets the spare. Mm -hmm. Eight pins have been, and I don't really understand why. Maybe you can explain this to me. Eight pins have been a headache for teams in the first round. Why is that? Well, what it is is um, well, you want to focus on keeping the pressure. You want to keep them focus on putting the pressure on someone's neck. And sometimes you can put pressure back on yourself. Am I? makes it. That's a good opinion. I like that. That makes sense. Makes a spare. Navarro's up. Navarro on three in a war, working for on four in a row. There's a little bit of trans, a little bit of, shall we say, translation. Maybe a little bit of movement. Maybe some adjustments need to be made. I think Public Enemy was hoping that they needed to make some adjustments a little bit earlier in this game. Mm. Uh, being ahead of transitions is key, especially when you're bowling on, on pairs that were re-oiled, but at the same time, not necessarily stripped. You gotta watch for everything, over, under, but you gotta be over that. Over, under, grandmother's house. Aha, there you go. And right now, um, what it's looking like is potential 277 finish for Mr. Navarra. Melito up top, it looks like a 258. If he provided, he strikes out. BC yes. crew up 90. Both teams have four marks apiece. Public Enemy's got two doubles on the board, so they could theoretically chop this down. I see They're four. running out of frames. Four well, pins. Yeah, four pins. You, you see four what exactly? I saw a ball that took its time getting there. Yeah, there's definitely a lot there on camera. Uh, and we got a bucket. And he's a shake and lose to kick the bucket out. Let's see what Melito does. And Melito, very good. Good old hard jump stop. I see Bach. So, peering over a little bit, just to see what's going on in the other two games. BC crew, well, the first handicap pair, which we're gonna be going after next, looks tight. The other match also looks tight. So, handicap is tight on both. Mm -hmm. Scratch, not tight. Keep in mind, overall wood's 10 points. Ooh, oh, eight pin. Both non strikes. Uh, he got nine. Crystal got six. Crystal's non strike is more damaging because she was on a string and she could have helped her team out with another strike here. Now, again, on the hunt for 22, if one team sweeps and they take wood by a lot, they just need to win one. Uh oh. They need to win one game anywhere else, and that will be 22. Crystal, now that's her first unforced error. So everybody's yeah. got an open on Public Enemy. Yeah. Nobody's got an open on BC Crew, which again will help the lead. Yeah, she needs <laughs> to mean, kick the spare. bucket out just to stay alive, and um, she didn't kick the bucket. Okay. So that puts a little more, um, a little more for BC Crew to appreciate and more for Public Enemy to think about um, in the close of this first game. And because of the lack of pin count on that three-bagger, BC Crew is closing in on a 100-pin lead. <laughs> While they're up. Well, Wilder, Wilder, Wilder needed that one. Yes, yes. The team definitely needed that one. He needed that one a big way. Here's LaCool. He was on three in a row. He had a nine spare looking to get back on the strike train. Again, nine foundation frame. 
That looks good. It is. BC Crew would love to be on a foundation frame with a spare and a strike and a five bagger versus already one open up on Public Enemy. Florentino trying, hopefully not trying to be two, but he's not going to have a strike going in. Yeah, he Three got six. his uh, fingers deep in that ball, too much fingers there, and it definitely went high. Thank goodness it wasn't a split, but he would have loved for it to be a strike. Yeah, he would. Again, BC Crew will be up by over 100 if Navarro throws another strike here and threatening for more. If he strike, even if he strikes here, even if he makes a spare, you're looking at a 120-pin lead, a very quiet 120-pin lead yeah, quiet from BC lead. Crew. Yeah, they're, ball, they're, they're balling. Their shots are doing all the talking for them. Sure is. Ooh, oh, wow, seven pin. Seven pin obviously has on a public enemy jersey on that shot. Oh, uh, Navarro thought he had that one. I did too. Uh oh. Oh, boy. Well, it may as well be a strike. Florentino open. Yeah. So right now, public enemy with only one mark on the board, a strike going in the foundation frame, 10th frame. BC crew with three. Should Joe Navarro make this? They'll be up by around 120 and change. Mm-hmm. Around 120. Or about, 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 about uh, one to well right there, yeah. Navarro up on a seven pin. Should be no problem on that. Boink. They were bouncing out. And yeah. then, nah, that was power. Oh, yeah. Hit it twice just to make sure. Yeah, going into the 10th frame, it is all BC crew on the scratch side. Already up by trip digits, looking for more. And again, as we've seen earlier, and as we always say, get the wood, get the wood, get the wood. Especially when you can get it, get the wood. What do we do? Get the wood. Get the wood. So Molito trying to get the wood, BC crew trying to at least keep it. I'm sorry, not BC crew. Well, yeah, BC crew trying to get it over 100. Public enemy trying to keep it under 100. So um, let's take a little note of this. So um, front six and then four, four seven pins in a row. What do you think the adjustment may be? Uh, that's a good question. I would say maybe, and this is weird for me to say, too fast? Hmm. With the ball. I, who am I to tell a 239 average bowler how to throw a bowling ball? Sorry, 240 average bowler how to tell throw a bowling well, well, ball. Well, that's why there's trainers on the side that can see what a I'm boxer's gonna, I'm doing. Gonna, I'm going to chat with Nutt over here. So, Nutt, if you leave four seven pins, and Nutt is a lefty, so I can ask him this question. You leave four straight seven pins. What's your adjustment? So oh, he's deferring to the kid. What's the adjustment? If it's just like flat seven, I'll move right and just like mix them out. Move like two or three, right? All right, so we're going we're gonna to talk about Jeremy Molito at this point because he's your teammate at, at this moment. Mr. 900, who has now left four flat seven pins. So we're going to see. I want you to analyze his shot and see if he makes it and see if he made the proper adjustment. It looks like for him, he's thinking proper adjustment is ball change. I agree. Uh, you agree? I agree. All right, we'll see. He thinks ball change is correct. The kid, baby flowers thinks that it's okay we shall see all right baby flowers let's see if you're right Mito comes up Phil ball oh seven pin goes down I like it but I think it's still a little move we have to make with it probably one or two left all right that's what baby flowers says and we'll chat and have fun with him at his name at his own expense later on in game two However, Jeremy Molito will finish with a 246. Crystal Bryant, no slouch, 212. That's right. Look Cooley up. And look Cooley. Oh, calm, cool, and collected, takes out the seven pin. Uh, I'm sure Molito wish he could have done the same thing. Well, that, that's a big double over there. And if Public Enemy does not want to get blown up by close to 150 pins, Aaron Wilder needs to do the same over here to strike. An open would be a disaster. I mean, this is already a mess, but we're not at disaster levels. No, we are not. And we're Wilder, close to disaster levels. You're right. Wilder has an opportunity to uh, put three more to add to his one strike that he has on the next point. Let's see what happens. And there goes the road to that, finishing out, hopefully. Well, big shot by Wilder. Again, you, you got to... Make sure to not make this unmanageable. Yeah, yeah, losing by 100 isn't great, but it's still manageable. You can win the other two games by 50 pins each. I think we've seen that before. Serious, uh, I think we have. <laughs> we've seen by a lot more than that. What you don't want to do is lose by over 200 pins. No, you do not. 
even though we've seen that happen and we've seen a team overcome that. Anything's possible. Anything's possible in the UBA. What is not possible is Public Enemy mathematically winning this first game. That is definitely not possible. Yeah, more X's, less stress is what they were, what, what both teams hope for. Yes. If he was gonna do that, do that now. I mean, yeah, he's gonna lose another 10 pins, but better than him losing another 30 pins. I indeed. GordonMath.com. Better to do that ball two than ball one. Obviously, you'd rather more do that in ball three than ball one or ball two, but it is what it is. Joe LaCool is gonna strike out for 235. And it's gonna be 210 White right left. there. 210. De definitely don't agree with that. I agree with that, at least getting one pin. Because it can come down to which wood did you not get? Of course. Always. Navarra up, looking to finish potentially with 256. Ball goes out nice, she'll come back nice. Oh, Messenger. Skip hopping to jump over the 10 pin, but doesn't take it out. Messenger says, sorry, we're not delivering on holidays. But that shot definitely delivers. Trying to make up for that blemish he had in the ninth frame of that of that chop spare. Navarra staring down at his 10 pin. Backs it up, and no problem on the 10 pin. No problem for Navarra. Uh, my guess is that both bowlers will be looking at different surfaces, looking to see what's going to happen in game two and or, or and three. And they're looking to definitely see what, what kind of look they have. Usually when you know you have a good lead, there's a good chance to pull out something else out of the bag, see what else you have in your arsenal, see what works in your arsenal. I think both bowlers are going to look, look at that. BC knows they have the first game in tow in the scratch pair. Uh, my guess is that Florentine should look and see what other looks he has with anything else rather than try to finish out with the same piece. Uh, yeah, whatever look that he has, it's not a good look. No. BC crew will finish with a very nice 726 scratch. They shall win the game. That's the first game that is completed, so they get two on the board. Definitely don't want to leave pins on the board as Florentino there. Uh, this is All right, so here we go, BC crew. Michael May leads it off. Second place, Haywood LaRue Marlowe. In the anchor position, Michael Jarosh. Republic Enemy, we lead off with James Beanie Jr., then Andre Watkins and Mike Merritt. And if you're Public Enemy, you are not happy with game one. If you're BC crew, you're very happy with game one. Indeed. BC crew taking all three games and up by a round. 140 pence. Uh, a little bit more than that, 142. On this pair? Uh, no, total. Okay. On this pair, BC Crew won, I believe, by 18 pence. And I'm getting a confirmation on that. Yeah. So, BC Crew starts with a strike from Beatty Jr. I'm sorry, starts with a strike by Michael May. Lou Marlowe up for BC Crew, looking to get a strike. First one on camera, he gets it. Yeah, one thing you're going to see out of LaRue is that he has many styles of striking. He does, he's up he there. does. He's actually, <laughs> we, we know him from many styles of bowling. He, he's actually a pretty good bowler in addition sometimes, to wardrobe stuff. That's a, Sometimes I can bowl. Not all the time. You see, 183 to start, but now I can bowl. But it ain't uh, about, 183. I'm older now, so I need time to 
get a little practice. So that was my practice game, but that was a bad practice game. Well, not about how you start, but how what? You know how I finish, baby. Waiting for that game three. Did, did you guys win? That's all that matters. All that matters. That's all that matters. All that matters is two points, and now you need another 19, and then you're That's good. good. Well, good. actually, you got six points, so now you need another 15. All right, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna try my best to get six right here. All right, let's go. And Jarosh gets all 10 that one. Well, Jarosh gets all 10. What does not help Public Enemy is that Beatty just started with an open. Andre Watkins does get a strike. Yeah, Andre Watkins right there. Um, he's starting out pretty good. Unfortunately, uh, leadoff bowler James, uh, I believe that's Beatty. James Beatty Jr. James Beatty Jr. 178 game one. And you missed game two, and Mike Merritt, uh, game one, bad. Yes. Well, I'm not going to put out scores. I'll just say bad. Well, well guess who's back? It's Mike, Mike, Mike Merritt does not want me to announce the score in public, so I'll just say bad. Well, Mike Merritt right now, Eminem, hopefully to come back, and let's see if he has uh, a little bit of a, a rehab on the strike. Oh, I see what you did there. No, he did not. Oh, man. He wants to burn his house. Well, not his house. He maybe wants to burn his bowling equipment down right now at this point. Yeah, with no shady comments, but that shot right there had a slim chance of coming back and leaves the um, Pat Hollis, the 2 8 10. What a Pat. Pat, Pat Hollis, I think, was and currently is a member of BC Crew, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. I think. I see it. Wood is good. Did not get the two. Uh, only got one. Uh, only one close frame in this game for Public Enemy. Well, and Public Enemy was getting 15 pins, and that is now gone. Not only is it now gone, BC Crew is threatening to get a sizable lead early, especially if Public Enemy decides that they want to continue throwing up horizontal dashes and red numbers. And that, that's true, and you definitely want to that's avoid bad. that. You don't want that. Well, let's see if the gasoline's on the lanes right now. Michael Beatty, a.k.a. Wildfire, trying to set this ablaze. And blazing trail as he carries that strike, a little light in the pocket, but gets all 10 in the end. As long as it goes down, that's the important thing. That's right, especially on a Saturday. Ha-ha. I see what you did there. Ha-ha. So, but second strike on the board for Public Enemy, first strike for Beatty this game. He's got some work to do after game one. Well, it's, it's a good way. He doesn't like anything on the right side. Well, look at it this way. If all the pins go down, it doesn't matter what you put on the right side. Well, I got to agree with you on that point, so. Well, I mean, well, right there, we just see your, your, um, the person you're lined up with across from you. He left a lot on the right side. So let's see what happens here. Uh, That's all Mike, we can do. Mike Merritt right now leaving a three count on the right side. Mm. Six, nine, ten on a strike. Spares as good as a mark. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see if Michael may make the spare. Yeah, BC crew a little bit sluggish as in the woods of Halo where Marlowe, he did not exactly bowl the best of his bowling abilities. Nobody else did, but then again, neither did Public Enemy. And mm. sometimes that is the advantage of getting the first round by when the other team comes up with fatigue. And if you have a bad game, that can counter some fatigue. Andrew Watkins up, and his team definitely needs a W. And he finds a way out of not leaving a baby split, leaving the three pin. He's, he's out of trouble. Now, one of the things that we spoke about before about Public Enemy is that they need BC Crew to make some mistakes to get themselves back into it. That there mistake. would be a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Unforced? Unforced error. There we go. A little bit of chopsticks. Well, it looks like neither team, to be quite honest, it doesn't look like either team on this pair has really figured out the lane conditions yet. So this is pretty much up in the air. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun. Oh, speaking uh -oh. of that, they just gave that back. Again, 4th of July is a lovely holiday, but last time I checked, it's not a holiday that you're giving out presents. Yes. But we have a pair of presents. And oh, look at that. Hey, Lou Marlowe's got a five pin. Five pin. Many styles of five pin. Now the question is, is there many styles of powdering? Yes. What's going to happen? Let, let, let's see. Mike, Mike, let, let me ask you a question. I'm here with Mike Merritt. If he misses this, will there be a powder party in the parking lot with BC Crew? There might be. There might be. So we have this on camera, on video. We're currently streaming this game. So if he misses the five pin, this could be 
Oops. Uh, no, he got it. Uh, Without a doubt, that, that one was a no doubter. He got that one. Now, what's really in doubt is Mike Merritt trying to make the spare here. Well, well, here in Circle Lanes, one seven ten has been made by one Petrovic. But let's we'll see if it's made over here. And uh, maybe not. Well, you know the duet Guilty Conscience with Eminem and Dr. Dre, right? You're right. So which one was Eminem and which one was Dr. Dre, the seven pin or the ten pin? Well, you know what? Um, he put the beats on on seven pin, so I'm, I'm assuming seven pin okay. was, was Dr. Dre. So, yeah, so right now we have two frames and we have two marks wow. from Public Enemy. Traditionally, you don't win against BC Crew that way. No. Especially if Michael Jarosz is going to throw a double here, and he does. Yeah, and a late, fall, a late falling nine pin. So I'm here with Rudy Feliciano. Hello, Rudy. Hey, how you doing, guys? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm great, even though we took a loss. It's all right. Oh, yeah, Rudy. It, was a, it was a close loss. It was a good game. It was a well-played match. I did close the 10th, but it is what it is. It just wasn't enough. My team won. My, my pair, we won. But uh, at the end of the day, we didn't do enough. Mm. So like now, that guy Chris. That now, guy Chris is a beast. Now, I see that you're looking around here for all of them. Which team in your mind looks the most dominant right now in this round? Uh, I want, well, there's a variation of teams. I just walked around the whole the whole house. Uh, of course, you always got to give it a BC crew. BC crew is phenomenal. They're OGs and they know what to do. Um, I'm kind of upset with PE because um, they're not showing up what they showed before. So, in other words, it's Bowler's Lament when you see somebody shoot 300 in the game and beat you and then shoot a 140 in the next game as they get escorted to the exit. Exactly, exactly. Um, actually, uh, what I like seeing out of here is, uh, you're going to be surprised, MOP. MOP seems to be the team to beat. Mm -hmm. uh, BC Crew, uh, and I got to say City Morgue. Any up. And City Morgue's looking very strong right now. It sort of looks like New England Heat. I was sort of eyeballing. They could be in trouble. Isn't that always the case? Great, great season. First, they're, they're the first round. They always have a great season. Uh, then they fall short in playoffs. Yeah, but but usually they at least escape around. Not this time. Well, but we'll see. Look who, they, who they facing. They're, fa they're facing a very good team. I mean, there are no bad teams here. They're no, facing no good teams. teams yeah. So yeah, I'm, kind of yeah, I'm going to get Andre Watkins here momentarily. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Oh, oh. Chuck. Half. Well, LaRue is a musician, and he played chopsticks with his piano yes, on that ball. Because oh. he, he chopped it. Andre Snare Watkins drum. here is looking to make the spare. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh. All right, we, we, we got to bring Andre Watkins David over here. Yeah, hang out here, Rudy. Hang out, hang uh, out, hang out. Because he, he gave away his match against oh, me. I, I, uh, so, Andre, Andre, we, we got to chat here, Andre. Andre, let's what have happened, a little brother? discussion. Andre, I am here. I am here with Rudy Feliciano. Who and and he was telling me that you guys beat him like a dirty sponge last round, no, and you beat him. But but you beat him, right? And you shot really well in beating him, right? His team bowled very well, right? Explain yourself. We won the total, though. <laughs> we get the total down. We won. Just one pair. Who swept you the three pairs? That didn't sweep us. Who won that two? Explain your team right now, though. That's what I want to know, because right now there are nine potential frames and you have a 44% strike ratio or mark ratio at this point. Yeah. That's for sure. Absolutely. If you would have done this against us, we would have been better. Only if. <laughs> Only if. I'm tired as hell. He is tired, bro. He is tired. I ain't been asleep yet. He's sleepy. No, no sleep, and he used all his energy to throw the strikes out for his win on the third game. He can't get no sleep. No. Nope. Andre, if you're not careful, it's going to be no sleep till Connecticut. No, I'm telling you. And, you know. Right now, we have three marks to three marks. BC Crew has taken care of the wood that they were giving. They're up by 27. Two of their bowlers are on strikes as we go into the fourth frame. Yeah, they got to dig deep. They got to find something. They got to, they got to, whatever pile, whatever pile they're throwing on right now in these frames, they got to dig through the pile and find, hopefully find some gold. Whatever they found against Tribe, they need to find it against BC Crew because BC Crew is giving them opportunities. Yes, and that was almost a big opportunity given with almost a potential 710. Yeah, almost a 710 up there. James Beatty, who finally looks like he's on the board with the doubles, looking for three in a row. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the wildfire right now 
can keep burning and blazing a trail to a potential 279. That ball looks good on the lane. Look for three. Two but pin does it not labors, fall. And the two, exactly. The two is, is still there. The two is standing up, nice and tall, standing up. And he wants to knock it down. He wish he would have knocked it down on the first shot. That definitely would have been a good response and a good a good battle cry to his team. Hey, yo, we need to show up. Alonzi, that would have been a good battle it cry. It would have been a great battle Atenzi. cry. Atenzi, a corner pinzi. <laughs> cry battle, but don't cry tears. A Spersky. Spersky indeed for Michael May. Michael's made that, and however. Yeah, they're a little bit sloppy, but they don't have five opens. They only have two. Public Enemy's got five. And it looks like he'll make this to oh. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The way, the way, he, ma he made the spare, but he had to throw the ball like 20 miles an hour in order to do it. Yeah, it seems like um, maybe Public Enemy didn't expect to be here as long as they as they are because they're looking a little tired. And, and Michael Merritt, Mike Merritt said, you know, he's feeling a little tired. This is game number, this is game number five right now for them. Yeah, you know, that maybe they maybe they had the we're just happy to be here award. And yeah. they won and they went, yeah, oh wait, we gotta vote another match. Uh-oh. Well, they wanna stay here. They, if you wanna stay, you better play. You gotta Lure, play to stay. Lou Marlowe with a strike. Andre Watkins looking for a strike. No, six minutes. I mean, mercifully to get a nine count. Well, he's had two other nine counts. We're trying to make sure this is not a third straight nine open. Well, change that dash into a slash. Yes, dash to slash would be nice. Michael Jibs, Jarosh, looking to not have a slash, but have a cash. Oh, yes, and he's going to cash in. And, that's, cash. and that's money in the bank right there, especially on Saturday night. Money in the bank for Jarosh. That's right. Four in a row. Yeah, he... As he's wrestling down uh, all 10 pins, they're wrestling over here in Public Enemy on this handicap pair just to get some close frame. And we got a close nine count. Nine count spare. We got a slash. We have a slash, his first of the game in the fourth frame. Yes. Which is one of the reasons why Public Enemy is looking like they're going to be down by almost 40 pins mm. with the assumption that Mike Merrick gets more. Because if he doesn't, then they'll be down by more. Let's see if Merritt is going to be a hero or if he's just going to get a Merritt badge for showing up. Let's see if, if he can put ten, all 10 pins down and strike. All 10 on the first shot is what you would like. One and done is what you want. Especially if you're tired, you don't want to shoot and a second shot and he doesn't have to. Yep, he does not have to throw a second shot. All right, BC Crew by 38. As we go to the fifth frame, almost close to the halfway mark of not just game two, but the halfway mark of the match. Yes, right. B if you're just joining us, BC Crew is up 6-0. They took all three games. And right now, doing a quick pier, it looks like they may take all three games again. Yeah, JBJ going up. James Beatty Jr., the wildfire himself, trying to keep raging on. The leadoff right now looking like the um, anchor on top. He has the most, he's the only person with a double on his team for this pair. BC Crew is trying to pull out Smokey the Bear, saying only you can prevent forest fires well, and trying to extinguish the wildfire. Well, only they can pre uh, prevent themselves from getting beat by a lot of pins. And hopefully BC cannot give them a little bit of hope. Mike, Mike May with a nice strike over on lane 18. Mike May, no problem on lane 18. Yeah. He's got to figure out what to do on lane 17. We'll get there. I think, I think I'm okay. Just got to get it out of my head. Just got to throw it better, exactly. In, in yeah. terms of Michael Drosh. Coach Mike, exactly. Coach Mike, what's, your, what's the uh, secret? Hashtag throw it better. Hashtag throw it better, and everybody's nodding their head in approval. Wildfire wants to throw it better than a nine spare. He really likes to throw it better than a nine open. That's better than a nine spare. There's a strike. Oh, there you go. And right now, like I said, Beatty right now leading the charge. We've seen the leadoff bowlers definitely on the handicap pairs trying to lead the charge for their teams. And we saw the same thing with Mason Silvers in Lights Out. And we're seeing Beatty kind of being a quiet leader, leading by example and not necessarily verbally. 
Well, one of the keys that Public Enemy needs, and it's one of the things that we discussed earlier, yeah, they better throw strikes that they mark, and they need to hang out with BC and wait for BC to make a mistake and find carry of their own. Yeah. Yeah, gotta... So they're getting they're getting what they want from BC crew. Well, two of the bowlers are getting what they want from BC crew. They're still not over average, and if Public Enemy was shooting over average, they would be in this one. Speaking of which, there's yeah, another would. strike yeah. on the board. As you said before, you little too before, uh, opportunities are there. They're being provided by BC, but it's all about um, if you want some and if you want to come get some, you have to be big and bad enough to come take some. They're, they're leaving some there. They're leaving food on the plate. They're just choosing not to eat. It looks like they're on a strike diet. Well, right now, Larue is not on a spare diet. He makes a spare. And if you're BC crew, the rule for you is this, fill frames. Throw frames, let them carry to beat you, because right now they haven't shown that they can carry to beat you. And now that I've said that, there's a sloppy double. Yeah, uh, hey, 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 sometimes we like them sloppy. Hey, take it sloppy. Take it any way that you can get it. This is the playoffs. Take it any way you can. There is, you don't get bonus pins for getting the ball in the pocket or not. Yeah. If the pins go down, that's all you need to worry about. That's all you need. All you need is pins. All you need is five Ooh, in a row for Mike Jarosz. And all I need is to trip out a 7-10. Mike Jarosz matches what Public Enemy did for their bottom anchor with Mike Merritt. And six frame going up. We got four marks, eight piece. BC crew up by 38. Public Enemy does have all three bowlers on strike, so they could close the gap here if they all strike. The story, the story here is Wildfire leading the charge for Public Enemy and Mr. Gerarsh leading the charge over here for BC. Well, if, you're, if you really want to talk about it, the story mm -hmm. here is five opens in the first eight, in the first eight bowlers for Public Enemy, mm -hmm. which allows BC not only to take the lead, but it is something that you should never want to do. You got Mike Gerarsh comfortable. Very comfortable. You, you should never let a bowler on the other team get comfortable. You need yes. to be putting pressure on at all times. Public Enemy is not doing that. BC is now up by 40, and they could be looking for more right here. If Michael May decides that he wants to throw a strike on lane 17, he hasn't done that yet this game. Maybe he'll do it now. Well, if any time, no time better than now to do so. Maybe with a shot. That ball's got to hurry up, and it does. Oh. First double of the game for Michael May. Yeah, Mike May and his shot definitely springs back in the pocket. Well, May showers bringing strike flowers. Well, he, he listened to Mike Jirashi, he threw it better. Threw it way better. Threw it way better. Now will LaRue listen to Michael Jirashi? Because LaRue definitely could throw it better at this point. I, I agree. He better throw it better. He better throw it better. Looking to make the spare he won. All over there. Nice spare. And with the exception of the first frame, it looks like uh, Mr. Beatty, Beatty Jr. right now is keeping it clean and trying to stay clean for the most for the most part and he would like those to be more strikes but um well he needs it yeah he needs his two bowlers that have higher averages than he does to start throwing some strikes in the start carrying oh. and speaking of which yeah style LaRue the gets the 10 pin yeah that was a very stylish strike yeah sir. a lot of style did you like one, the brother? style on that stylish strike style. sometimes sometimes you got one style you got many styles many styles baby. <laughs> Many, many different styles. I don't know what I'm going to do next shot, but hey. it's going to be something stylish. Yeah, we something don't know style. what you're going to be doing next shot either. That That's the beauty of bowling right there. What we do know is that Andre Watkins missed the head pin completely, which doesn't help you get a strike usually. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm throwing the ball, sometimes it helps when I miss a head pin. I hear that. So, Very uh, rarely, though. So right now what we're looking at is um, six frames, two hands, maybe six strikes. Josh looking for that six. He got it. BC crew looking threatening to blow this side open. We already know they're stretched. Game one, game one by 120. They only won this by 18. Mm -hmm. They could start to put the wood out of play here. Yeah, it seems and if they do that, you're seeing that 18 was not going to take 30. And I said, oh, yes, they were. I'm looking pretty good right now. I'm looking even better right now than he missed the spare. Hey, you're looking all made up. 
We're going to dress you up and take you out. Look at you. All made up. <laughs> yeah, well, pu public, public enemy is in deep, big trouble at this point. This is true. Because BC through is threatening to take this one and put it out of harm's way. BC crew already with five on the board. The best public enemy can do is three. And even if they get the strike here, they're still going to be down 60. Mike Merritt really needs that strike. He gets it. Yeah, definitely needed it. Um, it was a must-have for must Mike, have for Mike for Merritt. Must-have for Merritt. Must-have for Merritt. And right now, public enemy, they're doing okay. The problem for them, BC is starting to figure the lanes out. At least this trio is. Yes. Yes, this trio is definitely figuring some things out. The By the way, going I'm, on. I am eyeballing that scratch side, and we're not going to go over it yet, but just mm -hmm. making a quick mention, and we probably will be going over to it if Jeremy Melito, who's got the front seven, adds two more strikes to his repertoire. Yeah. Yes, I see that from Melito, and I see other things happening with the other two bowlers there. Uh, but what we see over here is Michael May. Uh, looking, like you said, he might, the light bulb went off. He figured something out. Figure something out in lane 17. He already had lane 18 locked. The fact that he's got 17 locked now is a bonus. And I, and I see a little smile creeping up on Michael May's face. As in the <laughs> on the bucket of beer here. That's why that's the only reason I'm smiling. What's a bucket of beer saying? <laughs> that sounds similar to that, yeah. What are you saying, beer? What's that? Saying hello. And there, taking well, out the 810 was, was uh, Mr. Beatty Jr. His eyes got real beady on that one, staring down the 8 and the 10 pin. Well, Public Enemy made game one close. They got to keep the wood close. Yeah. They cannot afford to get blood out of the wood over here. LaRue Marlin is not going to be too... Oh, oh double, double number one. That is an official double. Sanction LaRue double. LaRue Marlowe sanctioned double. So, LaRue, that was a different way of putting the ball in the pocket. LaRue is just saying sometimes he's shrugging his shoulder at me. All right, Andre Watkins with a strike. He wants to get involved in the party. Yeah. Someone already involved in the party, Mike Girash, front oh. six. Well, looking he's working to get grill. something. Yeah, now we may not even get to that other side if Mike Girash decides that he wants to continue striking over here. And he does. Seven under for Girash. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mike Girash, you know, forget about the party or the barbecue. He's working the grill right now. He's cooking, and he's cooking at a high rate. Everybody's getting served right now. Seven in a row for Jarosh. BC Crew, seven in a row on the strikes. And again, BC Crew threatening to blow this one open, just like Scratch did game one. Going over here again, call the merit. Trying to at least stop the bleeding. If he does, then maybe they'll get it within reasonable distance going in the eighth, ninth, and tenth frame. Mm -hmm. Merritt looking to make four in a row. That ball's got to turn. And it does. Mike Merritt right there with four in a row, making up for those two first frame opens, first and second frame, that is, spare, and then four in a row, trying to keep it close. Merritt showing exactly how Public Enemy won the first round in order to get to this spot. I think it was a lane change. So yep. it took a siesta in the middle and the beginning of game two there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I tend to do that from time to time, but... It was a team effort. Your, your whole team has helped, helped you in the beginning of game two. Yes, exactly. It's, it's never one person in the UBA. You'd like to think it's a team effort. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I hope you continue this, but they, they bowling good. Uh, you still got three frames left. Eight frame coming up. And if, well, it's going to be a huge one for you guys if you can keep striking. Oh, that's not what you needed. That's the wrong sort of double. Four, six, seven, nine, and it could turn into a huge frame. However, the huge frame that it can turn from could be benefiting BC crew. Mike May right now. Yeah. Did he figure out lane 17 completely? That is the question. The answer is yes. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, man. That ball went right, right through the nose, and Mike May... He smelt blood in the water, and he definitely jumped on that. He smells blood in the water, and he smells beer in the bucket. We know the real reason why you threw the strike is you just wanted to get to the beer quicker. Exactly, exactly. That's my inspiration for today. And the oh, six the quicker out. The strike, quicker you get beer, six out. So not only do they lose a mark, they're now down to a double. Lou Marlowe right now looking for 3-0 on his side. Oh, and for 
the first time in a while, we saw a little fist pump from Oh yeah, yeah, Like, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he liked that one out the hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you like that one. That, yeah, that one, that one, I felt good off of that one. I was like, uh, whatever's going to happen, going to happen, but it felt good off my own. Nine in a row for BC Crew. And Public Enemy, they're getting the breaks game one. They're not getting the breaks now. And, and again, you, you got to take advantage. You sort of knew if you lost that first game by 18 pins, that was going to spell trouble. Yeah, that definitely is going to spell trouble right there. And we have a 2-8 leave. And, and you could definitely tally up the opens and tally up the strikes. And you can see it's a, it's, it's, it's a difference. Yeah. And, and, and the difference, I think, for Public Enemy is going to be fatal for this pair and maybe for the match. Because you already knew BC Crew is up by around 120 game one. I don't know what it's going to look like. We'll get you that at the end of game two. But if BC Crew, and here there's eight in a row for Mike Duras, if BC Crew decides that they want to turn on the gas here, this can get real ugly in a hurry. Well, if you're multiplying strikes by the amount of hands used, he's actually got 16 strikes because he's using two hands each strike. <laughs> Ten in a row by BC Crew, by the way, for keeping count of that. We have more. Michael Merritt, and again, he can strike you. I'm not sure how much it's going to help, but I will say this. If he doesn't strike, you, you could be looking at 200. You could be. We've already seen that once today. Can we yeah. see it again? And keep in mind, again, 200 was not good enough in our first game. Yeah. So if you're BC Crew, you know you're going to turn it on. You know you're going to turn on the gas, and you're going to put the th foot on the throat and try to squeeze the life out of public enemy. Yeah, and it here looking for five. Uh, looking for it and does not find it. And yeah, you gotta start asking yourself some questions. If you have bowlers on the side, do you make any kind of sub outs for game three? Do you even want to chance that? Or do you wanna just wanna stick what you got and just show some grit and fight? Well, if you look at what the one could be, I don't know how exactly who are you gonna take out? Uh, who are you gonna call? Yeah, who, who are you gonna call? And I don't mean Ghostbusters at this point. Merritt's finally figured something out after he went open, open. He's got that, but none of them are going to come close to hitting their average. So again, who, the, the problem is on who you're going to take out. You have plenty of choices on who to take out. The bigger problem that Public Enemy has is that they need to take out bowlers on BC crew and have them stop bowling. Hmm. That's what they're, they're hoping for. They're hoping for yeah, some yeah, banana peels hoping, to fall from the sky. Yeah, I mean, the lowest that you're going to have, potentially, if everybody goes out the door, yeah, you're going to have a 230-something, you're going to have almost a 250-something, and, oh, yeah, you got a bowler that can go try. Mm -hmm, exactly. And that right there, that could definitely deflate any hopes that you had. And that really deflates it. Mike May, who has not missed on lane 18 this game, another strike. That's five in a row for him. Yeah, whatever um, Jerome's is cooking. Yeah, he, he's he's fanning that smoke, and the rest of his teammates are smelling it, and they and they want to feast. And I think they're feasting right now. May right now is not going for any beer. It looks like the beer bucket go. is Clean gone. That. Clean that mess up. The beer may be gone. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. See, Mike, Mike is hanging out here. I, yeah, I'm yeah. guessing there's no more beer. Yeah, spe speaking of music right now. Yeah. Oh, Mike, turn no more beer? Check. You took out all the beer. I don't see any more beer down there. There's plenty of beer. Oh, there's plenty of beer. You're just not drinking it yet. Pacing myself here. Pacing yeah. oh, yourself. I can see that. I save some for game three, you know? Yeah. Okay. Gotta save some for game three. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jones Beach. Yeah, and shout out to the music that's being made over here in this pair. And I see the musician himself, a man of many styles when it comes to many styles of striking. Let's yeah. see if we can get four in a row right here. All right, well, right now, BC working on 12 in a row. So they have their own three-person 300 going on. That is a symphony with a full, complete orchestra at this point. Yeah, exactly, right there. And you hit, you, hit, you hit a note right there. And it's always good to finish on a high note. Let's see if we finish high flush. We will, we'll be going to the middle handicap pair after we get all the wood, after all the carnage is done. We're going to look to see if, if the wood is manageable anywhere. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's what all comes down to, overall wood, especially if you have a potential to win. You want to you wanna find a way to shut out the wood. And one of the keys for public enemy is get the wood. Keep it close. If you're going to lose, keep it close. Game one, they kept it close. They lost by two, they lost by 18. Game two, Lou Marlowe looking for four in a row, he gets it. Handicap two is trying to make sure the wood is not close. Yeah, yeah he found some rhythm on that. 
to Marlowe, and that one looked good. That one looked good, felt good, and it was good. Uh, four right there, strike in the sixth, strike in the seventh, strike in the eighth, and strike in foundation frame number nine. I mean, to, to losing by 200 definitely has that possibility. Speaking of nine, we have the ninth frame. Ninth frame. Two Mike hands. Josh. Mike Josh. Mm -hmm. We already saw somebody earlier on, and you can watch it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We already saw somebody shoot a 300. Will we see somebody else? Here's a shot from Mirage right here. That ball's going to have to hurry up. It does not. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Good one from Mike. Great that run. ball eked out too far. It didn't hurry back in. 210. You know, the, the one thing that Public Enemy can hang their head on is that they're not having a 300 shot on them, at least on this game. However, and a big however, None of them, actually one of them can shoot a deuce, which would be Mike Merritt. Yeah. All of BC crew right now are already in deuces. Yeah, uh, if you only have one potential deuce on your side, and on the other side, low game could be two, uh, 237. Oh, and, and he makes a spare. And makes a spare. Yeah, that, that means you're probably going to be losing by a lot of pins. Yeah. Yes, but hey, how the other team? How the other team do? And you know, low game was 237 on their pair. Yeah. And high game only potentially being 235 on your pair or 225. <laughs> so going into 10th frame, BC up by many, and the question becomes, how big is the woods going to be? Because again, no wood lead is too safe. I cannot stress this enough mm. because we already saw somebody lose a 160 pin lead in one game yes we did in one game one game so it is very possible however they need strikes yeah they need they that need. ball looked good it was not yeah and they, mike may now has a chance if he goes out the door to have a bc crew up by 190. yeah they're hitting the pocket they need to carry uh, they need to throw it better, and when you throw it better, they need better results. Uh, Mike May, then getting better results. Wu getting better results. For eight frames in a row, zero. Much better results. Let's see, you have one, two, public enemy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve strikes. And there's another great result. One, two, and BC crew. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. BC crew almost double the number of strikes that public enemy has. Yes. Usually you win. Mm -hmm. When you, you do that. Yeah, usually. Usually you win. Yeah, I don't I don't see many situ situations when you don't. Um, and BC, all of them being born champions, right now can stand for best carry. Because they are better carry. Better better carry. Better carry than the other team. And the only enemies uh, that public enemies being enemies to right now are their open frames. Their open frames are their worst enemy. They need to really show up and show up in a major way going into game three. Massively. You, you, you know you lost this game. Uh, search for something that, that looks good. Maybe I'll go with the rule of kiss. Keep it simple. Hit the pocket. Hope for carry. Hope for a different result. Maine's going to finish with somewhere in the 230s. James Beatty up. Let's see if he finishes on a high note. Uh, hopefully something that gives him a little more hope going into game three. Let's see if he likes this shot. And let's see if he can keep it going. He tries a little line experiment. That may not be what he wants to go with. Hopefully he finds an adjustment. I'm not sure if there's anything right now that he wants to go with. Yeah, 178 finish for James Beatty Jr. And Mike May with uh, 237. Again, Public Enemy looked really, really good. I, I know that they're not looking great now. They looked really good in the first round for them to get here. So props to them. However, they're running into BC Crew, and there's a lot of times that BC Crew has these sort of days and right now they're having this sort of day at Public Enemy's expense. And 
Okay. Now, again, we don't know what the other two pairs are doing. For all we know, Public Enemy may be beating up BC Crew by the same amount that BC Crew is beating up on Public Enemy. We will definitely, definitely take a look at that. We will find out. We'll because find out with the what is. It's a united front. And united we stand, divided his feet go as he two steps and walks out that Fifth strike in a row right there. He's for styling and profiling. Hey, yes, he is. He is styling and profiling and leaving many X's up on that board. Just like his outfits, all of those strikes pretty much matched as it looks like on that board. LaRue Hayward, Hayward LaRue Marlowe right now representing BC Crew looking to finish with back seven. Andre Watkins will finish in the 150s. Now, by the way, both bowlers, and again, contrast to Styles here, both bowlers combined 120 pins under average, the first two bowlers. That, that's not how you win games. No, it's not. And um, looking comfortable is all of handicap pair number two. You have 237. We could have a matching 237 right here, provided that we get a seventh strike from LaRue. And potential 258 on the bottom. Looking like a scratch pair is handicap pair number two. Well, BC Crew's locked and loaded on their pairs. Yes, they are. And and any pair for BC Crew can be a scratch pair. Any pair. So Public Enemy, their pair is looking like a pair that that basically, uh, how do I say this? Left everything on the lanes after the first round and didn't bring anything with them in no, round they did two. Not. That's the best way to say that. Uh, so, LaRue, how does it feel knowing that your, your crew was so good on this lane that 236 could be, could be your potential low game right. on your team? Oh, shit, yeah, that, that's true. I was trying to tie him. Well, with you're such a slacker. I was trying to, I, you said I'm slacker? Slacker. slacker. <laughs> I, I take it as long as they beat me, I'm good. I'm always low man. Well, if it makes you feel better, you beat everybody in public enemy. There you go. So there you're you actually, go. so you're low man on the team, but you're third high score on the team. There that's the only thing that matters. I need to make the team win. To help the team win. That's, that's right. It. Josh looking to get it to over 200 on the wood. He will. Uh. Over 200. So they could either if he, get on. If he doubles yep. or if Mike Merritt opens, BC Crew will officially, assuming again that he doesn't feed the gutter monster, be opened by around or over 200 pins. That's right. And no food for them. No food for the gutter monster over there. No, only make the spare. Now the question is, will Jarosh double? If he does, they'll be up two or one with one ball for each of them left. Yep, and let, and we talk about many styles and all that thing. So let's talk about fashion. The fashion that uh, Public Enemy needs to put on right now is a lot of mountain climbing gear because they have to climb a mountain. Be, losing by 200 on this pair, you have to hope to uh, your head. Well, you know, Project Runway, Heidi Klum, one day you're in and the next day you're out. After yeah, round out. one, they're in. After round two, they, they need to get some better striking wardrobe going or they will be out. Oh, yeah, yeah, the word the word right now is hope. You have to hope that the other pairs are not doing what you're doing. And you have to hope that your 200 is not adding to a bigger deficit that's uh, going on around. Or you around. have to hope that BC Crew is doing, is doing the same job that Public Enemy is doing this game and Public Enemy is doing the same job that BC Crew is and Michael Dross is trying to yeah, you know, just just taking a little jog. Yeah, I'll take a little jog. Oh, Why I'm sorry, not? potential 278. Not 258. Potential 278 up by 192. Eight, eight or more, and it's plus 200. If you in the UBA, if you do not show up to bowl, you will get flattened like a steamroller. Mm -hmm. Four-letter F word, flat. Yes. <laughs> Which will let other people say other four-letter oh. words, like fooey uh, or and funk, frog. Or funk. Funk. Uptown. Fucktown? Fucktown. Funk you up. Funk you up. All right, so we're, so we're going to be finishing off here game two. Uh, or game one on the handicap. Game two on handicap one, I should say. Yeah. And Public Enemy will get on the board. They will win 
the middle handicap pair, they will win the scratch pair. So Public Enemy is on the board. They have four points. BC Crew is eight. We're going to see what the quantity is in terms of the wood. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's going to be BC by many. We're going to figure out what the exact number of many is. Oh, uh, yes. Hey, and we hear that uh, Public Enemy is about to yeah. fight. Public Enemy is about to fight. Got my, I, I don't expect Public Enemy to lay down. I certainly don't expect one of the presidents and one of the UBA heads to lay down, ever. Sir, how are you doing all right? I'm good, I'm good. But we ain't laying down. I would expect not. It's definitely not this game. Yeah, you ever play Street Fighter? You know Zangief? Yeah. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta press that button just start swinging. Just, just gotta swing like Zangief, just, just hit everything. <laughs> I, I think right now what they really need to do is play the role of Blanca and start biting heads. Hey, I hear that. But public enemies here for a reason, though. So they're not going to go quietly. They may not go at all. We'll see what happens. They, gotta, they get 35 extra pins on the bottom from the handicap. So we didn't get swept the first round. No, they, they won the first game in this game. Okay. It was 35 pins difference. Oh, it's 35. Oh, okay. All right, so we got a little bit of a change there. So it's now, so it's now six six, not eight four. It's six six. However, the wood, which will come into play, is still BC Crew by many. Mm. And again, we'll find out how much many is. We making payoffs. Hold on, we making payoffs. <laughs> and right now, we're looking, we're looking at over here on handicap pair number one for representative BC Crew. We have CEO himself. And we're looking over on the scratch pair right now. Who we have up, we have Mr. Watkins right now. I'm sorry, um, Aaron Wilder. A -A -Ron, Aaron Wilder. And taking everything out on frame number one is Aaron Wilder. We have Joe Navarro on the bottom. Joe Navarro, ball up. And leaving the 10 pin. So for those who didn't see um, game number two, Navarro definitely had a little bit of a drop. He started out with 245, 189, game number two. And we even had a little bit of a struggle struggle for um, Joe LaCoole. It uh, wasn't a cool result for him, only a 201. So maybe some potential um, transition issues may be happening over there. And on the scratch pair, uh, a big climb. Chris, uh, Crystal Bryant shooting 235, uh, climbing up from her 212 from earlier. And Aaron Wilder climbing up to 248 from 210. So we're going to see what's going to happen over there with the scratch pair. Scratch Bear definitely putting up a fight. And Public Enemy trying to show why they're here. They're, they, they, they're fighting back. All right, I know that you did the lineups already, so no, unofficially, yeah. unofficially, the wood is 260 pins. I will verify that with the scorekeeper, Aaron. That, that I've got that as 260. Would that be correct, sir? We good. No. We're not sure yet. There's some. Uh, oh, we're not sure yet. This is so far, so we got to make sure everything is copacetic. All right. Well, what do you have down? Or you're not sure yet? I'm not sure yet. I ain't okay. Total All right. Unofficially, it's 260. All right. All right. And we will officially introduce everyone here now on handicap pair number one. We have on BC Crew's handicap pair, CEO himself, Mr. Ty Tynell Tate, TNT himself. And we have Noel Ocasio, and we have the son of Devin Flowers. We have. Well, no. I'm well, sorry. Be the son of Dwight Flowers, son, which son would be Dwight seven Flowers. Devin Flowers. Yes, yes. If I mean, it's the son of Devin Flowers, I think Devin <laughs> would be really impressed with how well his youth kid is bowling. Yeah. Right there. The son of, not right now, Devin Flowers, a.k.a. the kid, son of Dwight. Yes. Uh, who, else, who do we have representing Public Enemy? Public, actually, I'm going to let Aaron do the intro since it's his team. Yo, we got Jason Sherman. We got Sherman, Sherman, Sherman. Sherman, Sherman, Sherman. Sherman. Uh, leading off. Then we got uh, Christopher Teller, trigger on the finger. Uh -huh. uh, and then we got Tyshawn Austin, T.Y. Uh, that's right. And, and he is the Y? He's the Y. That's right. And, and the question is the how. So how do you come back? from a potential deficit that we're not necessarily sure what it is, but we know it's a little deep. We know it's, pause, we know it's 200, 200 plus pins we're down, but we're, we're fighters, you know what I'm saying? We don't give up, we don't give up easy. If I gotta take people outside, you know what I'm saying, pay off, I don't care what we gotta do. Hey, hey I got a few, I got a few stacks on me just to pay some people off. I hear you, and we ain't hear no bell yet, so I guess the fight's still on. 
Right, because we got a couple of them on our team, uh -huh. on BC Crew, you know what I'm saying? There you go, I hear you on that. So, so here's what the strategy needs to be. In order to force a 2020 tie, first of all, you've got to win all three games. Yes. So two, four, six, that's 12. You need to win two of the series on the wood. And obviously, to not get overall wood. If you get overall wood and somehow manage to do that, you will win. But following that, you need to get one of the two. The closer one for you would be scratch because you're only down by 118. Handicap, you're down by a lot more than that, 220. So... Mm. We shall see what's going on over here, and I say that because Public Enemy's got five in a row on the scratch side, and BC Crew is not exactly starting off too strong on their side. We will get to that as we get to the later frames. Now let's focus over here. Oh, yeah. And we got, we got, uh... In, in game three. Yeah, Christopher right there. Uh, the, trigger, the trigger finger wasn't that itchy, and leaves a 210. Um, let's see if we get a 210 conversion over here uh, by CT. So as I said, if you by doing that, they can go 20 and 20 and force a tie. Uh -huh. So this is not necessarily over yet uh -huh. in terms of that, because by only getting six, if you only get one wood, that's 10. Getting the overall wood's 20. Now we're also making the assumption that BC Crew is going to hold on to the wood, but hold on, wait a minute. We Let's got kid right now with a 4-6 open. It, or some splits in it. Some splits in it, some spares in it. I say spares in it. I say oh, spares nice in spare. it. Yeah. Well, I guess the trigger finger. Yo, the trigger. How's your trigger fingers, Oz? Yo, is it is it itchy? Yeah. <laughs> that itchy trigger finger right there. See, so that's that's the key for BC Crew. Or I'm sorry, that's the key for Public Enemy to force the to force the tie. Yeah. To force the win, they're gonna have to win by 260 mm -hmm. at least to get the win and get the win. I'm not sure that's going to happen, especially if you look at that second handicap pair. So the other option is going to have to be find a way to win that scratch pair by 115 and change. Well, the power's so in their hands. So we're going to focus over on that eventually. And then obviously they've got to win everything, which also means that they need to win that game which they're on the third hand side, which they're currently in sort of close. So we'll focus on that when it becomes time to. Meanwhile, let's chat over here in the middle. Of the very good. So right Again, now, Public Enemy's got to win everything. Yeah. They're already getting pins. They're up by around 40, going into frame two. Yes. There's Tynell Tate. Clutch. Mr. Clutch yeah. with a double. Yeah, Mr. Clutch, the CEO himself. CEO with a double. Uh, so right now, you're going to see a lot of different things. So who, who, who do we see right now up? We have on So we have BC Crew, Tynell Tate, Noel Gassio. And you can either call him Baby Nut, or you can call him Baby Flowers, mm -hmm. or you can call him whatever. He's Junior. Or he can be the kid. Okay, we got a cast we got a Casio up. Come on, Come on. And ooh, going high, leaving the, the three six ten. All right. And, all right, Noel Casio. Yes, Noel yep, Casio. Initials N O, and if it, unfortunately, that's 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 no for no, no, a strike. No, 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 okay, okay. You're doing a little. Oh. And we're gonna see right now what's gonna go on with Mr. Taylor over here, CT, with the trigger finger. Let's see if the trigger finger is itching. Going up and takes everything out. Oh, definitely itching. His, right. his finger definitely itching. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That strike was Taylor made right there. Well, Taylor made. That's his last name. You already know. <laughs> and this right here is a definitely a makeable spare, but all makeable spares have a missable component. Let's see if all those components come together for a spare. A little high, and that's exactly what we're talking about. That's what. That's how we're gonna get back in the game. I paid her off. Yeah. And see, all, <laughs> and you, you did say you had some stacks on you. 
So it's all about the shift. And as the cold wind blows, right now it's blowing in the favor of Public Enemy. Well, as I said, Public Enemy's got a lot of work to do. They can do it. That certainly helps with the double. Yeah, a lot of work to be done, and it seems like they are clocking in, and they, they don't mind putting in the work. Let's see if they keep working. Well, again, their margin of error is zero. They need to win all three games. They cannot afford a loss anywhere. K with the strike. We see crew is now down 50. Public Enemy is up as we go into the third frame. And you know who you sound like right now? Do you sound, sound like, right you sound like Frankie I sound Maynard. Like my, I sound like myself. No, you sound like Frankie Maynard. They need everything. Well, they do need. They need everything, except that sort of worked against them because they got everything. If you remember oh, yeah. in the first game. Yeah. So can Public Enemy do what Lights Out did round one? That is the question. Well, you know what? When you hit if snooze... If they get everything, and and they could theoretically force a tie, uh -huh. which would be a one-game roll-off, which would be crazy, and, but it would be fun. And what did I say? 30 will not be had today in this match. Well, we shall see. We shall see. And my, I have 10 toes, and they're all down on what I said. I'm standing <laughs> on business. And speaking of business, we got the CEO up. And he's standing on business, but unfortunately, so the nine-pin is standing, is standing on business as well. CEO is up. Meanwhile, Jason Sherman up for Public Enemy. Name that tunes. Oh, name We're the looking tunes? for good tunes. We're going to see what the tunes play. Let's see my tunes. tunes. Sherman, Sherman, and Shirley Oh, I hear some pin. tune. <laughs> we have a situation. Uh, yes, that's the tune. That's some tune. We have a situation. Uh oh. Yeah. And powder rise. Powder in your eyes, But you gotta just hope it don't happen. Powder gets in your eyes. <laughs> and a BC crew spare ball has been thrown on the left lane. And it, and it shows that it works well. It must be drove very well. So let well. me ask Darren something. If he misses a five pin, will there be a powder party in the parking lot later? Yes. Oh. Oh, no. It'll be a JJ party. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that ball better hook. Oh. Woo! Yeah, ball hooks. No yeah, reason that five pin. Right. Got to spare. That's right. We, we, the Google Maps worked on that one. There you go. Strike by Sherman. Chris Taylor up. He's looking to double. Mm -hmm. If we have some more strikes, that would be five. The the worst that they can do is go five four and be up ten. Hmm. Possibly up more if we get a pair of strikes. Noel Casio right now, that ball looks good. And it's light, and we got a 6-10. Yeah, now, can Public Enemy take advantage of that? Here comes Chris Taylor. Yeah, the roll looked very good, but obviously missed inside, missed the target inside. And what we're having right now is a potential situation. Christopher Taylor hears some of the city more chatter and, and wisely realizes there's no shot clock on it. Steps back, regains the composure. If you're going to be a shooter with a trigger finger, you got to make sure your finger is steady. And let's see if he lines up and hits the target. Taylor right now. Finger on the trigger. Yes, it is. That's right. Two in a row, and here comes Public Enemy starting to make some noise. Yeah, shooters pull triggers, and right now, as long as the finger itches, he's going to try to leave the other team in stitches. BC crew right now. <laughs> They need to, well, oh, yeah, I know, it's that, that trigger finger. They need to find something. We had a chop spear over on the second frame by Ocasio. Let's see if Ocasio could then cover and avoid the chop spear this frame. Well, that's one double. Can we get another double from Public Enemy? Tyshawn Alston looking to double up, looking for three in a row. Got it. Yeah. Buried by Tyshawn Alston. Yeah, looking like a little, little, little tiger. What's that, crane? Was that a crane? Yeah, he has a crane. There you go. A Cobra Kai right there. And I'm sure they may, Public Enemy may be kicking themselves a little bit by letting the wood get away from them mm. by over 100 in game one and by over 200 in game two on each side of them mm -hmm. because that handicap pair is holding their own. And like I said, the two words I used before are potentially catastrophic and hopefully for one team, and that team being Public Enemy, will be positively cataclysmic. Right now, DeKent leaving a seven pin. 
You know, we said, oh my goodness. We said earlier, at least I thought earlier, you're not yeah. gonna make up 260, you're gonna go for the tie. Yeah. What would happen if Public Enemy can make up the 260? Yeah, exactly. I said, look, looking for a positive climax. You know, so much happening, I use the wrong C word. But right now, hopefully, we won't hear any F words or F bombs if they start giving that back. Well, of course, we're gonna be hearing a couple of bombs here. Meanwhile, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, he made that with authority. Oh, the yeah. Next yeah. Devin what he be, does. Next C word that we're going to be hearing is clutch. Yo. Because Tynal Tate is up. He's looking to be clutch. Yo, Devin, you try to take home a souvenir then. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't know his own strength. Oh, uh, but, but those who know him know that he does have uh, uh, many strengths, just like LaRue has many styles. But let's see if we can get some clutch style going right here as Mr. CEO himself, Tyno Tate, up lane four, looking to get more than nine, but he gets less than nine. He gets he gets a baby right there. Well, you're gonna, you gotta you if you're BC crew, you gotta start striking, and the strikes are happening. But the strikes are happening on public enemy side of the board, uh -huh. and all of a sudden that 260 whatever that Aaron's not sure of that may be important. We may need to get an official number on that. The way that this is going, mm -hmm. because all of a sudden that one could be a little bit on the dicey side. Tunes is looking to pick up, does not temp it. And see, what I would have did, being that I saw a split what would up there, you have I would have definitely took my time, made him wait, have somebody take the, the, uh, the pin out, because you don't want any kind of mistakes, any kind of unforced error. The unforced right. error would be the ball making some kind of contact with the pin in the gutter, and then the spear being you know, not counting at all. Well, it looks like he's got it. And he does not. So he misses both pins. And pin I, in the gutter. Oh, yeah, he, and, he can't and put the, the ball in the gutter in there. And now I'm wondering if that pin in the gutter may have affected the way that he threw the ball. I don't know. Brother, brother. We're brother. wondering if maybe you should have removed that pin out of the gutter before you threw that spare ball. I wasn't, honestly, I was looking so far down, I didn't think about it. Well, I wasn't thinking about you either. Exactly. But <laughs> <laughs> It said, I'm just going to lay right over here and let this person miss his one pin spare. I mean, it happens. It happens. It happens. And yeah, don't believe the hype. I don't believe the hype. <laughs> what, I believe right, what I believe right now is I believe that Chris Taylor is working on a double and he's looking for three in a row. Mm -hmm. And what I also believe is that they're getting somebody down that remove the dead wood. Should have had them before. Should have. Should have. Could have. Would have. Didn't. Sometimes you need that that, that time out. You, you know, you it's, it's no to, tech fouls. You needed Aaron to go over and say, "Now nah, we should hold up a little bit." Yeah, very good. All right. Meanwhile, we are going to move over to Scratch. Oh, we got a story. Because Scratch is now. We got a story now. As we said before, Public Enemy needs everything. Now, there's two versions of everything. Number one, they obviously have to win the game. Number two, they need to grab the wood. The wood right now was 114, but right now they've cut it to less than 40. Mm -hmm. Now it becomes interesting. And in addition to that, we happen to have two bowlers who, while they were sleeping when we were covering them, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden both of them have the front five. Yeah. That would be Aaron Wilder in the middle spot and Michael Florentino in the anchor, just in case anybody was familiar. That's right. Stay woke. And we are going to stay focused on... Now, now we're switching back over handicap to Handicap here, number but one. We'll, we'll chat about the scratch if it becomes interesting. Yeah. But, but meanwhile, let's stay over here. Noelle Ocasio looking to make the spare. She should have it, and she does. Noelle Ocasio all over that one right there. Chris Taylor up. Looking for three in a row. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're obviously, again, you got to win the game. But if you're public enemy, maybe outside shot of getting the wood? I mean, they have the wood already here. If they win the game, they'll win the wood. Mm -hmm. But maybe an outside shot of getting the wood somewhere else, forcing the tie. Yep. Now that I have just said that, Wilder has left a, an eight pin. Hey, there's that eight pin again. Actually, no, I'm sorry, four that, pin. That's a four. So that string is gone. Taylor right now looking to make a new string of his own with a strike. No, oh. seven pin. <laughs> Ten pin up on the board. Yeah. So. So no witnesses should be left. There's a witness there. Sometimes you got to spin the block and take that witness out. Let's see if the man with the trigger finger on the back of his jersey can do just that. That being Christopher Taylor. 
Only they have the power to take their own spares out. Speaking of power, we got Devin Flowers up, the kid himself. Let's see if we make the pins do a little dance. And they're dancing. They're making love tonight. They all got down. There, there you go. Fireworks, fireworks. As a <laughs> Look at the whole thing. <laughs> Taylor looking to make the spare he does. All right, all over that spare was Chris Taylor. Tyshawn Austin, he, if he gets four in a row here, mm -hmm. they'll be even on marks. Project enemy, uh, project enemy, public enemy mm -hmm. up by 70 pins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it caused a lot of mayhem, which is a mistake uh, yeah. here. <laughs> and right now we have Public the enemy y. looking to cause some mayhem. Yeah, let's see if the Y can show us the way. And he's looking like the how. Oh, he likes that. But, but four how pins did he leave that? Uh, how did he leave that? By going a little too high. The Y was high on that one. Literally. Yeah. Probably high. Not in a good way. <laughs> well, it could be a great way, depending on how you look at it. It's all about angles, and that was a high angle, a uh, high angle um, hit, and that's why he left the four pin, but he left it. And he and he takes it out. All right, going to the fifth frame. Public enemy up by around 60. Let's see what Toons is gonna do. Tunes, well, he should have taken out the, the, the dead wood in the gutter. He drove by the dead wood and the live wood. Let's see if he can um, take out all pins on the first shot. You only he missed would the pins if he could. Yeah, hey, you only miss the pins that you leave. Let's see if he leaves nothing off after the first shot. Oh, oh, no pin nice left behind. Speaking, ooh. No pin, no problem. Yeah. Come on, Crystal. Let's go. Oh, no. Uh, let's see what CEO Tyno Tate is he gonna respond? Let's see if he's gonna shoot a clutch shot here. Mr. Clutch on the back of the jersey. And he, he has a name for a reason. He's been striking since he had a hand. The the ironic part about this <laughs> is that right now they're in a position where Mr. Clutch doesn't need to be clutch. That's sort of out of his hands at this point. What he needs is he needs BC to crew to be clutch somewhere else, either on the scratch side or handicap side number two. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna have to. He needs to, some um, clutch bowlers off BC. Yeah, BC yeah. right now, again, in order for them to get the game or the match, they need to hold on to Wood in more than one of the trios. Oh, Some somebody over on a handicap here too, so the key is to throw it better. Let's Keys see. Better. Let's see who is gonna throw it better for these next remaining frames. Chris Taylor's up. Working on spare. Both Taylor and Alston no longer on strike strings. They're now on spares. Let's go, Chris. Let's go, Chris. And we get it now. Oh, wiggle, Tempet. Oh, it's wiggling. It's wiggling it's like right yellow. there. It's wiggling, but it's not going down. That's right. That... <laughs> and Tyno right now telling everybody to settle down and just throw it. And Noel, unfortunately, um, did not. It's is not getting. It's not. It's not getting the ball out. Well, the the important thing is this for them. They cannot allow. Ooh, they cannot allow public enemy to snag the wood. It's going to be very hard for them to snag the wood, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. As we go over here, there's three frames left on the scratch, and we may bounce over there if it gets closer. Again, as I said before, Public Enemy's got to snag another one. Besides the middle pair, they either got to snag the left or the right. They must snag one. If they yes. don't snag either, BC Crew wins. Uh -huh. So Aaron is pointing over to the left side, and he's absolutely right. It's going to be that scratch pair that's going to be deciding who wins this match. If Public Enemy can can get it, then it's going to force a tie. If they can't, BC Crew wins. And that is a big non-strike on that side for yes. Public Enemy. And BC Crew may be able to put it away in the eighth frame. Let's see what happens right here. Uh, a must make. And make it. made indeed it was. 
big shot from Jeremy Molina. We're going to be bouncing back and forth here because I, I understand we're going to be focusing on the handicap game, game three. However, and a big however, the scratch is going to determine who wins this one. Yeah, this is true. Let's see what so, the kid has to say about it right now going to the frame number five. And, and, and here's the question. Can BC Crew live up to their moniker? There's a kid. He gets a strike. Big double over there. Six frame over on the second side over for handicap one. Public enemy holding on to the game. And they need all there. So there's two things public enemy needs. Number one, they need all three games. Right okay. now they have that. Uh -huh. Number two, they've got to get the wood in two of the three because they're not going to get the overall wood. And they're definitely not going to get it if public enemy keeps opening, which is what's happening on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. So that means they've got to get it, and the only realistic one they have is going to be on the scratch side on the left. Even though that option is slowly closing, and Public Enemy cannot strike in the eighth frame. Yeah, they need to change the tune, and right there, Tunes going a little loony on that one, carrying everything on that sixth frame, has a double, and he needs to uh, add, a, add to those doubles. And Tynell did not throw a double. So, what do you think may be happening right there with, with uh, CPO? Uh, CPO right now, they just, if you're a BC crew and you see what's going on in, uh oh, you see what's going on over here on, on BC crew, what they really need to do is throw frames, get marks, seeing what's over here, realizing also in the back of their mind. If, if they can lock out the scratch as long as they don't fork over 260 pins uh -huh. in total wood, approximately, they're going to win. So they cannot afford to fall apart. No, you cannot. El Chipo, as you would say. El, El Chipo, absolutely. Again, Public Enemy needs everything. And again, we've said everything. And speaking of everything, you know, there's, there's people on certain pairs that are throwing everything in every frame. They have to at this point. But you're, you're right, margin of error is zero. Yes. So now, can public enemy hold on to what they currently have? That is the question. Big oh, shot over there by player. Taylor. Yeah, that was a big shot, a big error, but a uh, big result on that. Made a good surface change, but just maybe either squeezed it or didn't trust the surface on the first shot. Needs to get a little loose because you don't always get uh, good results on bad shots like that. But thankfully for his team and himself, he definitely got what he needed. No, well, Akazi looking for strike. She does. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's, it's important for BC Crew. We're not saying this isn't important. BC Crew still has to get marks. If they fall apart, they can have some troubles. Yeah, Noel definitely got what they needed there. And um, the why is wondering why he threw it so high on that one. And yeah, hopefully I, I he can think, carry I that. I think he was begging on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, beggars can't be choosers, but beggars need to choose to make their spares. Well, again, eyeballing the scratch side. And let's see if the kid is the GOAT on this frame. Three in a row will be a good feeling right now. And no, sir, no, no, no. Seven pin stands up and fights, and oh, that's got to hurry up. Oh, my goodness. I saw that. But it, it can't be doing that. I mean, th this pair really, again, is a pair, I don't want to say it doesn't make a difference because if they can get enough to carry over the wood, but you are correct. That is, that is a scratch pair that right now is going to be focusing because, again, overall wood. Yeah. Public Enemy's got to make up 68 pins in two frames. If they cannot, BC Crew's going to advance from a logistically real situation. Yes. Yeah. Public Enemy is doing everything that they need to do. What they also need is they need BC Crew to stop striking. Yeah, a lot of leather being thrown on uh, right now. It's thrown all the way around. Feathers are flying, and pins are getting hit. But for the pins that's getting missed, it's not a good look for the team that's missing them. Let's see if we can get back on the strike train right here. Tynell up, up on lane number 15. And high flush, and he flushes all the pins back. Late nine, pin four. Nice, nice strike from Tynell Tate. Now again, if you're, if you're looking at the middle pair, yes. you know, again, public enemy is doing what they need to do. Yes. They need to hold on, but they also, again, that key is gonna be scratched. 
big shot over there, and I'm going to ask Anthony in the 10th frame to slide it over on the scratch side because that's going to be the key to the match. Yes. We're going to hang out here for a little bit more in the handicap, but once we get to the 10th frame, yeah, that's really going to be ball game at this point. Yeah, we're definitely Go tuned in on all pairs, and Tunes is tuned in on three in a row right there, striking the fifth, striking the sixth, striking the seventh. Maybe that, that open that he had in the fourth frame woke him up, and he realized I can't miss anything if I take everything out on the first, first shot. Also, an, another story over here going on on Scratch, Michael Florentino got eight strikes in eight frames. He's got frame nine coming up. There's another strike here from Casio. That's right. And Aaron's looking at me like, oh, Gordon, you yeah. noticed that too, didn't you? Yeah, another strike in mf -er over here. And he'll get it, and that's the M and the mf -er is striking nine in a row. mf -er being Mike Florentino. <laughs> and Aaron now is running around. Ooh. Oh boy. And all of a sudden, the gateway to get to the series wood on the scratch side has started to open up a little bit. And now, a lot of pressure on Joe Navarro in the ninth frame. Yes. Because again, if they win all three, and if they take two out of the three on wood, if my math is correct, that's 20 20. I do not think they will have enough to get the overall one, but 2020 will mean roll off. So that would mean nobody's gonna reach 30? That that may at this point. Oh my goodness. Gotta get the extra wood, especially that is the pair that you need to get the extra wood on. And we're back focused right now on the trigger finger. Let's see if the clip is in. Locked and loaded. Cox back, likes it, and trips out the four pin. Does Christopher Taylor, Taylor made carry right there. And let's see if we have the answers to the question. The question is why? Why are we here? That's why public enemy yeah, we, is right we've here. We've got action all over the place, and everything is important. That's right. No question mark on that one. Joe Navarro coming up here. Tenth frame or ninth frame. Got it. Big, big shot. Going over to the tenth frame right now. From a wood standpoint, the difference is 63. However, and a big however here. Mm. Public enemy can strike out on the top for 110 pins. Mm. BC Coon can strike out for 70. That is a 40 pin gap. So theoretically, the difference is only 43 pins as we're, I'm sorry, 23 pins as we go into the 10th frame. Mm. Big shots here from everybody. Obviously, BC Crew still has feet in their own hands. So Public Enemy not only will have to strike, they're going to need some help. That ball's high, and the pin does not fall down. And that was something huge. She needed that one in a bad way. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Melito can make life a lot harder for Public Enemy right now with a strike over here in the 10th frame. Mm, let's, see, let's see what he decides to do. First shot coming up, buried. Yeah, definitely buried that. Crystal up for the spare, that ball's yeah, she, gotta yeah, get there, got and all over that spare is KB herself, Special K, Crystal Brown. You know, the, the ironic situation is that the two games that we saw that were blowouts, uh -huh. even though this is tight, the two games that we saw that were blowouts really describes this match. Exactly. It's one of the things in the UB that you can't afford to do. If you lose, you cannot afford to be blown out. And that's exactly what happened to Public Enemy, both games that we saw. Yeah. And that's why right now they are playing catch up instead of Kumpla B in this one. And you know, I might as well be a weatherman because I so somehow can predict when the storm and the tide is going to shift. I stood by what I said. I said that nobody's going to get past 30, and it's looking like that's going to happen here. That is correct, except you never predicted the winner. Ooh. Nope, I, I dare you did not. not. You dare not. Phil Ball, that's what she needed the first shot. 224, will they regret the extra 20 pins she did not get? We'll see. Melito here, a big shot. For him, that could add another 10 pins or so to his total. And the lead got it. Yes. Big shot from Melito. Yes, big shot from Melito right now. Melito looking to finish with a 246. And LaPool after after uh, Melito will be next up and can only finish with a 292. Um, Wilder, A-Ron himself, A-Ron. Well, 
What could he finish with? It looks like a 79. It does, it does. Now the other thing that I'm noting over here in the third, BC Crew just took the lead in that third game. And if they win that game, then it doesn't matter what goes on on scratch. Obviously, we got to keep it on scratch because A, they need the wood, and B, oh, someone's got the front nine. Big and finish for Melito. Yep, Melito finishes out in the tenth. Uh, only had one blemish, and that was in the fifth frame. And that, that was a nine miss, so resulting in a 246. So, rather he made that spare, his, his, what would his score would have been? Well, if he made the spare, obviously it would be a. Oh, you mean the second bullet? Yeah. yeah. Well, the yeah. blemish obviously could be in a try. No, I'm saying for, for Melito. Melito had one open. Yes! And that could have well, been. Well, if it could have been a 276 exactly. right there for the strike. Big strike. Over for the no thumb assassin. Here's Joe LaCool, and he's been struggling. A strike here would really benefit their cause. Needs it. Doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. Two, four, seven. However, and a big however here. Now focus also has got to go. Oh, what the heck was that? That was, oh my goodness. They had control of that game in their own hands on public enemy side. They don't have it anymore as they go down to their third bowler. Yeah. Ooh, indeed. Now, BC Crew's got a number of ways that they can lock up the match. And one strike. But Mike Jarosh will do it. No. Nine pit. Which means now they, they, they have a chance to get their own destiny. If Andre goes out, the, if. Yeah, I don't know what the heck he did there. If know. Mike Merrick goes out the door, public enemy wins. Mm. They'll win by one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> And all right, so strike coming up happens. over here. Big shot over here. Gets it. And while they're oh still well enough, boy. Joe's really going to want to make that spare over here. Oh my goodness, he doesn't. 20 pin game, and all of a sudden, Joe Navarra, who probably wasn't even looking in this case to be relevant, 21 pins. Yo, Aaron, oh boy. Shoot, Aaron Wilder right now, Wilder down on the lanes. His initials are AW, and it looked like it could be a potential W for a public enemy well, that here, they do what they need to do. Here's the situation. Navarre needs a first hit. If yes, he gets he the first hit, that locks out the wood. Game set, set and match. If he throws anything but a strike, and Florentino goes out for a tray, public enemy will win the wood over there. That's the one other wood that they will need. Mm. Interesting situation. Over here, there's Mike Merritt. Needs strikes everywhere for public enemy, and they must have them. Merritt, first shot. Got to be a strike here. Yes. There it is. Here we go. Got to finish out here with a strike, and he gets it. Big strike. You suck. Again, Navarre throws a strike. It is over. BC Crew advances. If he throws anything, not a strike. Public and Florentino throws a 300. Public enemy could potentially force a roll off. Navarra, this is a very big shot. Big shots for everybody at this point. Big time players make big time shots. They don't come bigger than Navarro when it comes to making big shots. Let's see what happens here now in the 10th frame. Navarro, this is for game, set, match. Yes. Navarro hits the first one. That will lock up the wood. BC crew, they don't mathematically advance yet. But, and a big butt here, it just made life a lot harder for Republic Enemy. And high drama here in East Haven, Connecticut. Well, the, well the, what, what's there is this. He can shoot a 300, but it will be no losing effort. The best they can do is, is 2080 on the wood. The first shot from Navarro locked it. He needs five pins from Navarro. And, and BC Crew will lock up the wood on that side. And if BC Crew makes it past here, and it's looking more likely that it could happen, they were in a fight. They were in a fight. They were in a fight, but BC Crew is going to advance, and that's it. Unless, unless BC Crew loses by around 160 in the middle pair, which won't happen, BC Crew will advance. 
11 in a row. Meanwhile, Florentino, 11 in a row. It's not often that you see 300, 279, 224, and the team loses. Yeah, not often at all. But we have now seen it twice today because DHS's Nicholas Paradis shot a 300, and yeah. their team lost. And it looks like history may repeat itself here. John Nuarva finishes out with a 290, and BC Crew needed almost every single bit of it. Yes, they did. Joe Navarro showing up uh, when he needed it. As you said, the weight of the world was on his shoulders. Wow. And it felt like a feather. But Mike Florentino and the rest of the scratch pair, it's for nothing 300. to be taken away from there. No. <laughs> <laughs> and 297 finish. All right, so now we're going to go back over the middle pair. So BC Crew will take what they need, which is six over there. And they'll take everything over there. They're 16. And assuming again that they don't lose the wood by a whole lot of pins. And I mean a whole lot of pins. That'd be a whole lot. It's got to be a lot, a lot, a lot of pins. Phil yeah, oh, Advance. Oh, 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 oh. I can't say more than that because Aaron can't even tell me what the official amount is. A lot. Hey, y'all stop messing with the president of the UBA. But all things and all the other things aside, Public Enemy, they showed up. They got knocked down, but they were not knocked out. They rose up, and they started throwing punches. And there's going to be some scars. Both teams are going to have scars. One team is going to be able to look at the other team like, hey, you were the better one today, but thanks for giving me that fight. Now let me go, let me go patch this up real quick because I got another fight to have. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. B BC Crew made... Had to sweat a little bit. Public Enemy showed up in game three, gave yeah. him a run. Yeah. But BC Crew gave, basically dug a hole that was too big for Public Enemy to get out of. Yeah, and after today, contrary to the single, when it comes to Public Enemy, I believe the hype. And I believe they're going to be back here and they're going to, well, basically put a hurting on whoever, whoever wants to step up. And if you're going to show up at Battle Bowl, if you feel like otherwise, why don't you go have a conversation with them and find out, see what they say back to you. Well, we'll see what we're going to have here. I would, I would say, yeah, you got two players of the game, and they're both on scratch. Jeremy Melito or Joe Navarro. Pick your poison. Michael Jarosh also. Yeah. Got three of them. And that's one of the scary things about BC Crew. Any of them at any time can pop up a seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three of them. Uh, Navarro gave herself a 100-pin stretch. He went from 189 in game two to, to uh, 290. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, you can finish this out. I'm going to see if I can go grab somebody from BC Crew. Hey, go ahead. And um, I was going right there. And, you know, to take nothing away from Public Enemy, they showed y'all. For anyone who didn't know who they was, make sure you pay attention because you could be seeing them. And you may not want to see them if you see how they can come back today. If you sleep on the wrong person, that sleep could be your last one. <laughs> And shout out to Public Enemy for doing their thing, making it to the situation. BC Crew, battle tested. They've been here before. Last year, I talked to Tynell, I talked to Nut. They was in a rebuild mode. And right now, we see what they were building. They're building potential for them to come back and maybe rise that mountain again. Back to prominence of what they know. Public Enemy. I feel like they're going to be here for a long time, and they're going to add on to the pieces that they already have here, and they have some good pieces. And right now, we're talking to Mr. 900 himself, one of the Mr. 900s that was on the scratch pair, Jeremy, Jeremy Melito. How was the left, and was the left good for you for all three games? The left was very good. I knew going, at, well, I watched a little bit of the first set, I knew kind of like had what to do. Uh -huh. uh, some of the lefties that had success, um, you know, just had a little bit of game plan, just throwing it, you know, not get too on top of it, just throw it to the friction, and, you know, just let the carry take over. And, and to talk about friction, and, and segue, well, kind of like looking back to last season. You guys didn't make it here. I talked to, to Nut. He said that you guys were definitely in a rebuild mode. Uh, um, with that rebuild and looking back then and looking now and looking potentially into the future, do you feel you have everything you need to walk in the battle bowl and take on all comers? Yeah, I mean, we knew we were close last year, um, you know. 
we, we added a couple pieces, some young talent, and, uh, you know, we really just committed to ourselves, to the team this year. I think that's what the biggest piece was. We all stayed committed to the process and, uh, you know, just wanted what's best for the team. So I think that's what the difference was this year. And obviously uh, some talent like the young gun right there uh, doesn't hurt. doesn't hurt at all. It definitely doesn't hurt at all. No. Uh, Jeremy, you slacked off by 129 pins this game, Mr. 900, only a 771. That's it. Now, one of the keys that I thought, and Sean Knight and I were talking about it, was BC Crew, game one, you guys, game three, you guys down there, built a huge hole that was too big for Public Enemy to get out of. And one of the reasons why that happened was you set the pace early the first two games. First, first game, 246. Second game, yeah, you're that you didn't win that game, but 279 kept the wood going. That wood turned out to be crucial. You held onto it by 24 pins. What was going through your mind when you hit the 249, and then again in that third game with the 246, you know, trying to get your team going? Yeah, I mean, I knew I just had to keep us close. Once we built a nice cushion game one, it was all about just keeping that, that lead. Um, you know, obviously I gave my teammates some time to figure it out, and Joey stepped up big game three to, uh, you know, carry us to finish that off. Um, you know, in team atmosphere, it's all about just picking each other up. I know they've done it for me plenty of this season, so it was nice to help them out a little bit today. So yeah, great shooting. Now, I don't know exactly who you have next. I'm not sure anybody's going to until everything's settled out. Is there any team that you want to see? Is there any team you don't want to see? You sort of have a rematch that you want to have in mind. Any thoughts on that? We like us against anybody. Um, you know, it's all it's all fun and games till we get to Battle Bowl. Just want to get to Battle Bowl and, uh, see how the cards fall. We like ourselves against anybody. Got two matches before you do that. Uh, any shout outs, anything you want to say? Yeah, just uh, shout out my wife, Christina, and my son, Caleb. Uh, happy to strike a little bit, you know, getting away from home. But uh, happy to uh, strike, strike for my team today. Shout out BC Crew. So anyways, to wrap this one up, BC Crew wins. They advance for Sean Knight. This is Gordon Pepper. We will see you tomorrow, at least Sean Knight will. Well, you'll see me tomorrow also, I believe. Yep. North, Northeast Conference coming up. You'll be all day. See you. All day.